seven, eight, nine. Nine of my respondents indicated that they are in the lower class bracket. So nine out of 28 gives me 32% are at the lower income bracket. So if I go back to my sheet here, I said that it was 32%. So 32% is that. Is that going to be 68%? Is that correct? Yes. 68% of my overall indicated that they were in the middle income bracket. So that completes my data analysis, right? Thank God I was starting to sweat. Um, data analysis. You'd make an English teacher do math for that long, they get very uncomfortable. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and move on on our task sheet. We're going to give a big X through this. And now we're back to something that I can relate to. We're talking about words. Okay. Now, the big thing that I want to do here is I want to take a look at the amount of repetition that I have going on. So I'm going to skip this line again. I want to break out into adults. Um, I'm going to skip a line. We'll go teens. And then we'll have a category of both. So you can see that adults, teens, and both. I need to look at words that are in common with the data. So I go through my data, and I actually need to read. Okay, and just I'm going to just skim. I'm going to use a quick reading strategy to try to pick out some common words that are in both sections here. So I'm seeing money and happiness. Those are the two that I'm picking out of here. Money. Money. So I, I can pretty much guarantee that money is going to be one that I'm going to need to point out. Up here I see clothes, phones, and games. So I want to kind of look and see if those are around here. Things. I'm seeing things quite a bit. Money is repeated. Pretty money. Money. Phones. I'm going to say money and phones are words that I'm picking up on here. Just going over really quickly here. So. Money and phones are two words that I pick up on. But I'm just going to write money and phones. Because this is a data set, I'm not really going to be using complete sentences here. So money and phones. Now I want to look at um, my adult data set here. I'm going to go, I dislike when I do this. I'm going to go ahead and start scrolling. Money, I can pretty much guarantee that money is going to be a common theme here. Tweets, Facebook, obsess. Oh, look, somebody defined the word. Uh, that's funny. Obsessed, American dream, um, money, Cadillacs, that's nice. Teens, money, adult. I think that this question poses too much of a generalization. What socioeconomic bracket are you considering? <laughs> Come on. Come off it. Um, obsessed. That's funny. Um, it's all about the money. Yeah, that guy's got swag. All right, so. Um, <laughs> Today I watched five seniors get overly excited about shoes. That's great. Um, America. So I'm getting America and money. Music, cell phones, they've repeated. OK. And teenagers. So words that I'm seeing repeated by adults are 
money, of course. I heard obsess in there quite a bit. They're talking about teenagers, obviously, because they are not, and they're being asked about teenagers. Money obsessed teenagers, etc. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next column for time's sake. I know that one thing that adults are repeating a lot is car, house, American dream. So that is handy. I was kind of skimming through earlier. Actually, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just thinking back to when I did this the first time. Um, so I want to go up to the teens here. Most of the time, American dream. I know my, my teens repeat American dream a lot. Um, I wonder why they do that. It doesn't make sense to me because it's not like we've been talking about that and nothing else for the past nine weeks. So American dream, life, and fantasy for my students here. I know that my adults seem to talk about clothes. And one thing that I'm going to do here is even though my adults said different things like clothes and uh, shoes and Cadillacs, I'm going to go ahead and just write clothes. Rather than getting into shoes and things like that, I'm just going to leave it at clothes. Um, I'm going to say house. I don't know why I capitalized that. That's another example of me doing random capitalization. House, uh, cars, etc. Oh, I forgot to put phones up here. So these are things that sort of reinforce my idea that people are kind of discussing these material things when it comes to the American dream. But, and then right here, it says both. Okay, I'm just going to tell it to repeat because there's no need for me to go in and do all of that. So my next part here is going to be interpreting the data. And I can X this out because I can. So I need to go on to interpreting the data. And because I am a stickler for organizing my paper, I know that I did gathering the data here. So I'm going to need to write interpreting the data here. Capitalize data because this is the title of a section. Interpreting the data. Skip a line, put the number one. Once I go back to my task sheet, it says summarize your findings in the space below. Did you prove or disprove the assumption about your thesis? Are the results inconclusive? Explain your answer referring to the specific percentages you calculated on the previous page. Now this part right here, so I'm going to have to pay attention to, referring to the specific percentages that you calculated on the previous page. So if I come here and I answer this question, I want to answer if it proved or disproved my thesis. I want to say if it's inconclusive. And I want to use the data that I use. So I'm going to actually say uh, my results are inconclusive because I don't think that I really have proven anything here. But they have. Not inclusive, inconclusive. Um, I haven't proved anything here, but what I have done is I have enhanced my understanding. My result, my result are, my results are inconclusive, um, as I have not proven. I'm going to use it in positive here, comma, only reinforced my thesis. Let's see. Is that true? Did I reinforce my thesis? Let me double check here. Um, see, yes, I have reinforced my thesis because most 
of my